Today's question comes from Augustus in Kentucky. My wife struggles at keeping our grocery budget, and I don't know how to help her. Looking at every dollar in our food budget, including out to eat and groceries, is about an eighth of our total budget. Is that enough for two adults with no kids? Is it too much? Do you have any tips on deciding what is the right, what the right amount should be? How can I help support her so we can stick to our budgets? Oh, well, Augustus, welcome to every problem. <laughs> most american households have Mm -hmm. it's the food budget it does i'm like we struggle with this too it's it's just i'm like one costco run can throw us over and i'm like oh my gosh what like it's hard it really is food Mm -hmm. is tough Mm -hmm. but two adults and no kids uh and it's an eighth of our budget so we say about 20 Mm percent can go to food 10 to 20 percent depending on income and situation Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean well uh, it's uh, yeah i'm i'm I think you just look at the amount and say, okay, we can't do more than that or more than this on this amount of income, you know, and you can use a percentage if you want. We have some recommended percentages that are part of every Which dollar helps, and yeah. part of the other. That that helps. But um, most of the, let me, let me, if you've just started this process, what I always tell people when I'm teaching budgeting is whatever you think you're spending on money, whatever you think you're spending on food, you're wrong. You're spending more. And so... In order to get the rest of the budget to work and everybody happy to work the rest of the budget, go ahead and be up a little high on the food budget. You're not going to stay high on the food budget for eight years. You'll quit. Eventually, if every month you look up and there's $100 left over in your food budget or $200 left over in your food budget, eventually you'll dial it down and go, well, our food budget is really like 100 less. I mean, it's really what it is. Because you'll catch a rhythm and you'll get to know what's going on. But, um, uh, I mean, a thousand years ago when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, we started to sit down to do our first budget, Sharon and I. You were a baby. And um, I was all game on, nerd on this budget stuff. I'm gonna, We're going to do this. We have envelope with food written on it. And you're not getting any more money than this. And um, I think we budgeted like $300 for food. Now, this is 1980-something, right? And so we budget... 1990 we budget $300 for food well Sharon just she's like this lady she's like you're out of your mind you can't do it for that we have four we have four family of four three you know two kids you can't do it for that and I'm like well yeah you can I mean just don't spend so dead gum much just get your butt out of the Kroger you know and we got in this big argument yes which you should have and, Did you um, go grocery shopping? That's what I want him and, to do. And, you know, he and needs that's to go exactly see. that's exactly what happened. Ah, she said, maybe I'll all right. that from y'all." <laughs> she said, "All right, genius, you go do it." And I said, "Well, I will then." And I couldn't. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I it's... went over there and I went, "Oh, dead gum." She's right. Yes. And so we up, we up the food budget back in that day to five hundred dollars a month. That was a thousand years ago. It'd be. Seven fifty in today's dollars, so, easy. Well, with family of five, but, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that that was. Uh, uh, I mean, we. But I was, man, I was way off. Yeah. And when I, you know, so yeah, that's the thing I would tell you. Probably, uh, your wife's not the problem. Probably you are, like I was, and probably you get your butt in the car, go grocery shopping with her, and start to figure out what this stuff costs. And you might have some positive some suggestions. Yeah, and if you guys are, depending on what baby step you're on too, I mean, if you guys are baby steps one, two, or three, you want to be realistic about what food costs, but you also don't have the leisure just to go up and down every aisle and get whatever you want. Like no, there, no, no, I wasn't suggesting No, 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 no. I'm just saying for him though. I'm saying even plan. basics, you don't yes. know what they cost. Right, right, right. But I'm saying too, his wife, which this is more me, where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go see, oh, that sounds good. I'll just throw that in. You know, I can, I can be a little bit more like that. Now you can do that on baby steps four and on. Yeah, you can enjoy it. But if you're on baby steps one through three, then she may say, hey, I'm going to pull back on some stuff. Yeah. and not, I would lose yes. the battle to the tune of a couple of hundred dollars here mm-hmm. to win the war of getting <laughs> on the same page yes, that's with your spouse and getting on the same page and running everything together. Yes. Uh, you know, and everybody being happy. And you can always dial it back down later. I mean, very few, unless unless your wife is just a twerp. I mean, it, but very few mature people would say week in and week out, month in and month out, oh, I'm just going to hide this money to the side. We're, we're, we've got more in this category than we need. No, we, we're going right. to admit that we're high right. later right. and bring it back down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've done that in some categories around our house. The other thing that I remember, the story I remember that um, is – I've heard so many people say that they felt the same way. 
when we say live like no one else so later we can live and give like no one else for Sharon she said someday and you're dreaming you know we got the yellow pad out we're trying to pay off the debts we're trying to get the IRS off our back we're we're working and scratching and clawing and she said one of my big dreams is to have enough money to just go to the grocery store and fill the buggy with anything I want and not worry about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a fairly low budget dream at the end of the day. But that was like to not have to feel so constrained worrying about every carton of eggs. Well, looking at every Every price, stinking price on every generic yep. everything. Yep. Generic yep. Cheerios, for God's sakes. Yep. And, um, uh, you know, all just this stuff. Just enjoy it. And just to be able to walk in and buy whatever I want, which now for many, many years she's been able to do, and mm-hmm. she doesn't have to think about her grocery budget anymore, hasn't in a long, long time. But what a, what a great um, goal to have. Okay, so something else I thought of, Augustus, if you're listening, when I was doing research on my book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, I was talking about safety versus status and all that and interviewing people with the safety mindset. A lot of women said there's a comfort of having a full fridge or a full pantry. Yeah. There's something emotional about... Especially oh, if they came safe. from a home where food was a struggle. Yes. So there there could be a safetyness there that she feels the need to have. If, if she doesn't have, you know, if she's not cutting back and she is buying a little bit more than maybe you guys need necessarily, there could be a, an emotional safety aspect of that. And so to kind of dig into that and look to say, okay, are there other places that we can have that security and maybe save a little bit on the food budget? But it's amazing how many women I talked to who said, I... If I have a full fridge, I feel like, oh, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. It's there's that, something that, about there, it. There's it's an like, emotional. It's like an emergency fund. Yeah. There's an emotional thing to it, especially if you have kids and all that. Well, it's, like, it's just, a, uh, a nesting thing, you know, just mm-hmm. to make sure that your family's fed. Ta- yes. I want to know my of. family's fed. I want to know my family's fed. Yeah. And uh, just very, very important. So your food budget um, will change a little between baby steps one, two, three. And then later on, you can relax it a little bit in four, five, six. But it's not going to change a ton. One other thing you may find in your food budget that you can do is when we started out, uh, we had two separate envelopes, one for restaurants and one for groceries, so that we didn't go to the restaurant and eat the grocery money because you can do that really easily. Oh, yeah. And keep those categories separate. And if you're in one, two, and three, you shouldn't be in a restaurant anyway. You should be getting out of debt. You should be eating at home and cooking from home and uh, you know, saving the money. And so, but, but yeah, I think if you, some of you guys, I mean, I haven't done it in a long, long time, but truth be told, one of the biggest fights we ever had back in the early days of starting the stuff that we teach was over that stinking food envelope. And she threw it at me. <laughs> you go do it then genius. <laughs> and so I'm like, I will. So I go over that was there. The unstable money classroom years. <laughs> yeah. I go, I go over there and I couldn't do it. And so then we went back together and I watched really how good a job she was doing yeah. to her credit and to my shame <laughs> because I had tried to shame her into doing, you know, into living on absolutely nothing. It wasn't, it wasn't possible, the numbers. I was trying to make all the numbers work, and that was just one of the categories. It was a problem, <laughs> you know. But it didn't. Uh, man, it, you, you're nerds. You've got to be careful with this. Uh, whoever does the shopping, if your husband does the shopping, you know, ladies, you can't, you can't. You got to go and get a little bit of that in there. That's right. Especially when you're starting. You don't have to do it forever, but it gets everybody in a rhythm, gets everybody on the same page, and that's just really, really important.